And I have been calling for Manila for one year and a half. And I'm Tom Barron. Um, I will also work for Red Hat. I serve as the project team lead for Red Hat. And I used to work on Sender and have been working on Manila for a few releases now. And what what are what is like one of your favorite highlights from Stein? My personal highlight was making things easier for people to contribute. Um, and it was it did start with I mean a brainstorm that we had back in back here in Denver where they said you know how I mean why is it so hard for us to get new contributors that can actually contribute code and not just make minor trivial fixes and stuff which we're which we're really excited about equally but you know for them to sustain their contributions they they got to start thinking about features or bug fixes and stuff like that how do they how do how do we get them to ramp up really quickly. You know, give them some sort of basic building blocks so that their their uh, first step towards us is not all that hard. That I mean, probably something that we all went through, but make things easier for them. And we did quite a lot of that in uh, in Stein. I mean, we didn't do it, uh, you know, as a team per se. But we we I mean, looking back, uh, yeah, looking back at it, uh, I, I I can now string together a bunch of things that we did, uh, and we seem to have worked towards making things easier. Giving them building blocks like hey, push button deployments, give, I mean, making things better in terms of documentation, completely revamping the uh, review policy and the review attitude that we had by just talking amongst ourselves and then going and publishing what we were, you know, had, had on our minds were conventions. And then actually simplifying those conventions by, again, talking amongst ourselves and saying, hey, you know what, this is actually hard for a new contributor to get. These things are just not written down anywhere, or we don't have to be this rigid, especially when we want to, you know, lend that hand and say, "Come on over and help us build this project." Well, it's it's a tricky one for sure because well, we have been working on different stuff, uh, but uh, one of the highlights I I really want to mention was our PTA labor on actually getting, um, you know, open source keep being open source. We have he have been working really hard, and we as a community have been working really hard to you know keep uh, getting more contributors, keep you know um, all the boys to to be heard, um, and that is uh, something that is expected, but sometimes not some something so very common in open source communities. And uh, uh, for that to happen, we actually need somebody that enforce that, and uh, he was the kind of leader that did that. So uh, we need to recognize him. For that, uh, first time was getting to work with Victoria and Gotham, and also, <laughs> and and to um, actually other people. This is my second time as as PTL, um, so that I spent most of the first time learning. I really feel, feel like we uh, are building a good community and a good team. Um, it's also an opportunity. Uh, I think we're beginning to get the message out and Stein that we're not uh, just the Manila that people had heard about before. We have a lot of, um, um, we're, we're seeing increasing deployment, real deployment of Manila, and it's not the Manila that people had heard of with um, a fancy back end that works with Sender and Nova and everything else. Uh, but with product, we have production quality stuff back ends um, uh, that people are really interested in deploying. Um, I, went to lunch here with people that told me war stories and success stories doing this. Um, and it's very exciting to see that kind of adoption right at a time that uh, OpenStack might feel challenged that it's not the sexiest thing anymore. And I'm going like, well, we don't feel that way over here in Manila. We, we see it really getting pick, picked up and used. And Manila getting respect, as it were, is a key piece of open infrastructure in a way that I don't think was true before, or is it increasing a lot. So that's, that's the way I think about what was happening in Stein. Uh, let's talk about train. Have you all already met 
Mm -hmm. yep. are, you, are you done, done. for? Yes. Okay, so we're done. So what are we going to see in train? So, yeah. I'm going to start done. <laughs> yes, and um, some of this might or might not get completed in train. So I'm thinking about ambitions. Um, one of the uh, things we're working on is to get our critical services all running active active without requiring this kind of heavyweight pacemaker orchestration that some of them do now. And that will, um, there's a lot of work to do that. I won't get into all the details of it here. Um, uh, but there's some architectural stuff that's got to happen that's different than what we do now. There's a bunch of testing, there's performance issues, and there's adapting to new topologies that are different than the classical OpenStack topologies. Uh, a lot of it could be called edge stuff. Um, and it's very exciting kind of work. And there's also some um, kind of, um, you know, put the, put the rubber of the road and dig in kind of work as well that it's got to happen. Um, orchestrating that work and planning it and scheduling it and getting people to engage in it is going to be a challenge and train. But that, that's what we're up. One of, the, one of the many things we're doing, one that comes to mind for me. Yep. I feel like you've laid the groundwork, though, for, uh, for doing something more challenging by making your onboarding more accessible and really focusing on that for a cycle. I mean, it's never done, but because you've done this, you now have more contributors who ramp up faster, and you can hit the more challenging. Yeah, and another aspect I didn't address that I, I, I think Victoria would speak to is a big piece of technical debt we've had. Yeah, well, uh, in last cycle, we have been working really hard on getting rid of you know, technical debt, because to be honest, it's like... Uh, it, there is always something else to do, and things move really fast, and usually, you know, get your hands on it, you know. Um, exciting features, and you just, you know, be deep for later, some stuff that you really need to do. And uh, we have started working on getting rid of technical debt last cycle. And for the next cycle, we also uh, have planned several actions, including uh, one of the biggest ones we had, which is the OpenStack client integration. And I'm really proud about this one because um, we actually, well, I was involved with the old Ritchie program. I was a coordinator for it. I'm, I'm not a coordinator anymore, but I, I will be helping out with mentoring for one of the interns, and she will be working on this feature implementation. Um, so we are really excited about that because it's not only, you know, us that we are going to be involved with mentoring, but all the community, like, they have been really supportive for this. And they have helped a lot on, on, you know, get everything ready for this intern to come and to work on this feature. Um, also, we have other features that we actually need to, to be working on, such as, you know, documentation efforts, something that we take very seriously. Uh, UI integration, something that we have left behind and we need to get our hands back on. Uh, so, you know, these are small things that we have been spotting. We, we have tried to discuss them on this PTG so we can start working on creating, you know, back reports, um, you know, information on what we need to improve, what we need to do. So, you know, newcomers that actually are interested in those areas, which are, you know, maybe learning a bit, a bit about Manila and um, completing some stuff that are maybe more accessible, uh, they have everything that they need to start, you know, contributing to Manila. You know, at the Berlin Summit, Victoria was recognized uh, as the mentor of mentors. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to be one of the mentors whom she's mentored. <laughs> uh, and we, we, but it helps us. Uh, she really has helped our, uh, our community grow um, to be a place that we can welcome people to come in and we can help them. Uh, we'll invest the time to help uh, new people uh, help us. We can give them work that needs to get done, and um, we will not just leave them off open to the side, but uh, we'll, we'll invest the time and effort to make sure everybody succeeds. Yeah. Uh, Victoria, do you feel like, did you have a mentor who encouraged mentoring? Or, or why, why, what was your thought or the process between, behind how you became a mentor. 
So yes, of course I had a mentor and I, I really, really, you know, appreciate her and admire her. Uh, she, she was one of the contributors for Triple O, well, that was the last work she was doing, Shuri Kishon. Um, and she was, you know, kind of teach me everything I had to do technically, but also in the mentoring side. And I think it was, it was very important to me. So I decided to, ask, you know, give it back to the community, but actually, you know, doing it myself and also encouraging others to do it as well. So yeah, of course, she was amazing. And if she sees this video, I, I want you know, her to, to hear how I appreciate that. Absolutely. So what are you looking forward to in style? Well, uh, all of that, but uh, one, one other thing was, uh, we started doing this at the end of the last cycle. Uh, we, we, we actually got together with multiple product teams at uh, Red Hat itself internally, mm -hmm. who had these customer uh, use cases. And then we, uh, I mean, Tom's visits to Berlin with the uh, summit, uh, we, we saw CERN uh, folks over there, and then we saw the OpenStack cloud provider folks at the Kubernetes summit and, st and stuff. And we, 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 we found this missing critical need, which was to expose Manila to container orchestrators. And there was disparate work in different corners and, and in different places, like people were already using Manila in production, and supplying storage up to these container orchestrations, but we, we I mean, we thought, okay, now we, we've got to go build a product and a community around this as well. Uh, so that's that's been going really well, and I'm excited to get that work. You know, it's already uh, up to a good solid state where we 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 have a new pull request that's going to merge uh, pretty soon, next couple of weeks, where we, and we have futures uh, of what what else we're going to integrate uh, as far as Monolo goes. And the best part is. Even before we, we got there, we having to, having all the people that are already going to use this and are looking forward to it and come and give us this, you know, uh, requirements or stuff saying, uh, you know, we're really excited that you guys are doing this. That's that's been awesome at this summit. Do you well? Yeah, that that leads to uh, this is the first time in a few years that we've had summit and PTG back to back. Um, did you did you have meetings like this where you yep. were able to interface with people that you wouldn't normally interface with at PTG alone? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And and uh, I mean, I, I I love this format. Uh, although I mean, I, I do absolutely sympathize with folks that wanted the dedicated time for uh, PTG as such for the developers without the distractions. Uh, and and not every company is the same. Not every you know person is the same. But at the same time, this was what I enjoyed most about meeting the users and meeting the operators and stuff and, and, and listening to them and, and it, it wasn't just the, the pain points and, the, and uh, that, that would motivate what I'd work on, but also the constant re, uh, reaffirmation that this isn't a science project and, we, we, uh, and all the contributions that we're actually put, putting together are solving real use cases and are, are helping people and all the good stuff that comes out of these things and, and sharing a beer with people, getting to know people uh, beyond the developer community, that is, that's been awesome. And I used to always be uh, you know, sad about not going to Summit because personally I couldn't travel four times, to be honest. And, th th and that, that, that's, that's going to reduce to two times, so maybe, so that, that, that might be a good motivation for my employer to consider sending me to Summit or whatever, or, or because there's PTG at Summit. So that part is really good. Yeah, <laughs> so looking absolutely. forward to that to continue. Well, to be honest, yeah, I, I as well love these formats. Uh, in fact, it kind of makes me remember of the old times, OpenStack. Like uh, my first time, it was in Portland, and I was in back in 2013, and we had everything all together. And you know, this vibe of actually getting you know feedback from people that is not a developer like you, but also is involved within different areas, such as I don't know is our user operators, but not only them, also, you know, people that is just, you know, just saw the event and they came because they wanted to know an open stack. Or they are marketing, or they are sales, or, you know, they are customers. And, uh, you know, having this one-on-one -on -one with them is something that is not, um, that is not um, available in other other way. And um, having everybody all together in here actually, you know, helps and encourage the collaboration and that allows us to actually deliver better solutions. 
So I think it's, uh, yes, probably it's tiring for most people because it's a long week. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it's worth it. I don't know that I have a lot to add. I agree. I was, um, I'm, I'm tired at this point, but I have had a great, uh, great time, a lot of uh, uh, serendipitous conversations, uh, meeting people who I had no idea I would be talking to um, about issues I didn't know anything about, learning about new problems, mm -hmm. learning about people who were actually using our stuff that I had no idea were using it. Um, so um, really, really a good time. So, so I think it's just terrific that we're having um, OpenStack and, and APAC, uh, and in China in particular. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when I went to the Tokyo summit, it was, it was a, a wonderful experience, um, both from an OpenStack point of view and just from a, a seeing, mm -hmm. seeing the culture around it, and mm -hmm. learning and seeing OpenStack living in a different context than what I was used to in my day-to-day -day life um, is tremendous and I think that would be a huge opportunity with China too. It will be a different OpenStack than what most of us are used to and I think that's a really, really good thing. And looking forward to meeting all the contributors from there who don't get to travel to the other places where the summit happens but you know it's going to be back in their backyard and we might see some of them for the first time. Very excited as well, more because um, it's we are an open source community, and as such, we we have contributors for like everybody, everywhere in the world. And uh, sometimes it's not easy for people to travel, and you know, having the summit being you know distributed and having them you know one time U.S., one time Europe, one time APAC. I think it's it allows everybody to join, or at least you make it easier. So I think that's, you know, a real spirit for open source community and, well, personally, I'm very excited to maybe be able to go there, so. Yeah. Are there any final thoughts that you want to add? So I'll just quickly say that, you know, a lot of people aren't that familiar with Manila. Mm -hmm. And what Manila does is enable shared file storage for consumers of that file storage. So that means uh, whether you're, it's not just Nova VMs that can consume it. Manila doesn't really care. Manila serves up storage over a network. It does it with multi-tenancy, so, so that uh, multiple consumers of it can use it and not even know about each other, and step on each other. It's, um, you know, they, they can all work together peacefully and with a shared uh, infrastructure at large scale. But the consumers of it can be Nova Compute instances, they can be bare metal machines. The bare metal machines may be managed by OpenStack or ironic or something, or they might be outside OpenStack. Similarly, we can serve containers, and containers can be something about like Magnum and OpenStack, or they can be external container orchestrators like Kubernetes or Apache Mesos or something like that. Um, so Manila and Manila can work with the rest of OpenStack or it can work standalone. So it's really open infrastructure that can play with OpenStack and then emerged out of the OpenStack community, but is more than just OpenStack. And, and we're really excited about train. Hop on over. <laughs> we're going to go on a joyride.